NASCAR remains one of the most popular spectator sports in America, yet it attracts very few African-American fans and even fewer African-American drivers. Why has success eluded people of color in this arena? Is it because blacks just don't like racing? Or is it because racism still exists in this sport? It's Your Call looks at racing while black right now. There is no doubt that Americans love NASCAR. Despite some economic difficulties in the last year, it remains a fan favorite all over the country. And in recent years, there's been a huge growth in popularity among women and people in the Northeast. But one place there's been very little growth? In the African-American community. Why? Well, that's what we're going to examine on this edition of It's Your Call. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Lynn Doyle and as you know in the last couple of years as part of our Trackside 101 series I got to know a little bit about NASCAR. First from a rookie viewer perspective and then later on as an actual fan. But today as a reporter I'm curious to find out why there's so little diversity in stock car racing and why the stands are still primarily filled with white fans. To help me do that, I've invited two longtime observers and participants in the sport. Let me introduce them to you. Leonard W. Miller is a black racing pioneer and the founder of Miller Racing Group. That was the first black owned team to enter the Indianapolis 500 back in 1972. It was the first black team also to win a NASCAR track championship that took until 2005. His son, Leonard T. Miller, is here with us as well. He's the co-author of Racing While Black, how an African-American stock car team made its mark on NASCAR. He was co-owner of NASCAR's late model team from 1994 until 2007. Gentlemen, great to have you with us. I'm really anxious to, to hear your perspective on this because I'm now a fan of NASCAR, but there are still a few questions that I have about the African-American community and this sport. Lenny, why is it? that African Americans as a whole are not rabid fans of NASCAR when typically they're, all, they're filling the stands elsewhere. Well, they don't have, <clears throat> right now they don't have anyone to root for and then they still have the stereotypes, uh, NASCAR uh, being a, a good old boy sport um, and they don't have any heroes to root for like a Tiger Woods or Serena Williams uh, that you would see in tennis and there's many reasons for that. There's just more than one um, start would be corporate sponsorship when my father and I go to corporations and even other teams and African-American drivers we're not taken seriously um, in the marketing divisions of a company. Why is that? Because this is 2010 and African-Americans have made their mark on all other sports and in the corporate arenas as well so why is it that the good old boy um, philosophy as you put it still remains in effect in this day and age. Well in the corporations um, there's been an element uh, in Fortune 500 companies called diversity that's started I think in the early 80s which were basically designed to keep Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton off their doorsteps. Um, and they're set up for photo ops and basically donations to nonprofits uh, like the NAACP, you know, United Negro College Fund and, and a host of others. So when African Americans go in, not only for auto racing, even for business uh, in any industry, they will bring up that, hey, we, we donate a million dollars to the NAACP, we don't need your business as a contractor, and we don't need an auto racing team. You need to go down to the diversity department. Well, the diversity department has, they don't have budgets for auto racing, right. they just hand out, you know, uh, budgets for these nonprofits. So when we present our proposals, they fall on deaf ears. They don't even listen to the proposal or the presentation. Leonard, you've been around this sport for decades. Do you agree that, that corporations are just not interested in sponsoring African-American racing teams? Or is it that there's now just a lack of money to sponsor any teams? Now there's, there's both. That When the economy is real good, African-American racing teams and drivers are not sponsored. Now that the economy is down, that's used as an, another excuse uh, not to give the African-American race car teams and drivers a chance uh, in the sport. And I, I must add, from a historical viewpoint, there's only three ways that the a black athlete uh, makes an uh, 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 impact in America. One is having a white angel 
to break into the sport like Jackie Robinson, mm -hmm. Brands Ricky, boycotting or uh, products to make sure that th people get sponsored. Okay. And that doesn't work uh, anymore because the black community is now split. Uh, and, and the third is superhuman strength. <laughs> Have to do extraordinary feats uh, to pioneer in a sport. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned Jackie Robinson because in Lenny's book, he says that as you were coming up through the ranks and, and becoming the, the first black owned racing team yes. that you were actually looking for a so-called Jackie Robinson of racing and that was quite a struggle for you to find that person who could break the color barrier and have the white angel on his shoulder and the supernatural strength as well. Uh, uh, that is true. We've had about three different Jackie Robinsons that have come through uh, the, the sport and as Lenny had mentioned the money 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 <laughs> Is, is been holding them back because you need a hundred thousand dollar race car before you get started or how good your talent is right and and most of that money comes from families okay so we've established that obviously money is needed to have any kind of success in stock car racing or, or Indianapolis 500 yeah, or anything like that anything. whatever the whatever the venue is you need to have money and money's always been an obstacle right. but I have to go back to this good old boy network that exists. You, do you think it still exists in this day and age? I certainly know when your father was coming up that, that it was prevalent, but how about now? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, on the uh, race, racing circuits, you know, even drag racing or any type of racing, especially NASCAR, is very family oriented. Um, so when you start out at the lower levels to work your way up, it's usually the parents or the father owns the car and the son or even daughter or cousin is driving the car. So you can't just walk around and ask for a job like there's job openings. Right. Because those jobs are already taken by the siblings of the, um, of the parents. So an African American driver has to come along with their parents, just like I'm second generation with my dad, not as a driver, but as an owner. And we've recruited other drivers where their fathers have started them out or in many cases they don't even have a father or family and then they would come to us or we would recruit them and get them started out of the out of the 14 black drivers in NASCAR that we started uh, 10 did not have fathers 10 wow. out of out of out of 14 wow what a statistic that is and do you believe that racism still exists within the industry uh, yes i i i do because uh, there have been telephone calls when we speak in front of organizations that the telephone calls come from out of the dark from some NASCAR executives that we shouldn't be allowed to speak. And that's this year. This year? Yeah. In January, 2010? Last time was January 16, 2010. And are you saying that these phone calls are made because you were speaking as an African American? Or Af is it that they just didn't want Leonard Miller to speak? Both. We have an African American perspective over what really goes on and what it takes for an African American to conquer the sport. And um, it's not made against any, anyone, but we want a level playing field. And because we bring up the level playing field, uh, uh, people call in the middle of the night and say, don't you let either one of those Millers speak. Wow. And that's like pre civil rights era. I was going to say because you recount in your book experiences that your father um, lived through where that kind of racism, the racial slurs, the, the threats, the intimidation, right. all of that was part of, of the everyday existence that he had as a black man and basically a white man's sport. Yeah, well that still exists now. I mean my book covers 1993 to 2007 and in many of the chapters um, we were challenged uh, sort of racial slurs in the 90s and all the way after 2001 to date. Um, so it still exists, especially at the grassroots level where we raced and experienced right in our face, you know, in NASCAR. Hmm. So it's, it's still there. I mean, we're looked at as a threat when we arrive at a grassroots NASCAR track that we're getting ready to take over the sport. And a lot of competitors say, gee, you know, Tiger Woods, he's the best golfer in the world. We've got Serena Williams on the tennis court. Now racing is gone. Um, so we've had racial slurs and challenges to date, you know, in recent times. Hmm. That is very disturbing. I want to give our viewers an opportunity to let us know what they think. What, what do you think of all of this? Are